Okay, to create the crumple effects, let's first open a copy of Blender. I'm using Blender 2.79. Now I'm going to quickly make a very quick and dirty uh, scene just to uh, show off the rudimentary process of making this. So I create a sphere and then I'm going to parent it to a empty. So I'm just going to position it first just to illustrate how one way of going about making these crumple zones. So then I'm going to uh, put the cursor to select it just so I'm able to make the empty um, and its origins are all lining up. Uh, so I make a spherical empty, scale it up, and then I parent the sphere to the empty. What I'm then able to do is then transform the empty instead of the sphere, which uh, is quite useful in a lot of um, circumstances, but for such a basic scene it probably isn't necessary. But another reason I'm using this is because I'm going to be using the uh, cloth simulator, um, which isn't what I I used before, mind you, on my um, on the video that I made quite a long time ago. Um, but I feel that the results are more accurate in terms of real physics. Of course, um, I'm also going to be supplementing that with uh, proportional editing and uh, shape keys. So what I've done here is that I've animated the um, empty so that it, the ball hits the uh, cube. Then I'm going to add a collision uh, mod uh, physics uh, to the cube and a cloth sim to the ball. I then create a basis shape key and add one vertex group. And just to make sure, I just go into edit mode and assign that vertex group to all the vertices. Just to make sure that all their weights equal to 1. So now that that's done, uh, we can go back to the physics tab. And we're going to check pinning. And select the vertex group that we just created which I didn't name, so it's just named group by default. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to play the animation using Control A. I'm going to let it loop because I've uh, set the region to the end. And then when it's about to hit the collision object, I'm going to uncheck pinning. Now, I made an error here. Uh, first of all, I didn't really play with any of the cloth settings, so I, I would suggest um, bumping up the structural a bit more just just play around with all the settings and get it to looking how you would want it also what's affecting it is i i left on gravity and i i would uh, suggest turning gravity off to zero unless of course you need it i've also put a subsurface modifier onto the object that gives it its nice crisp look and as you can see after turning off gravity the deformation looks much more uh, natural because it's not sagging down and being pulled down by the internal gravitational forces. So now that we've done that I've changed it and uh, made it a shape key. So under your shape keys uh, which will be under basis it will create a new one and you'll be able to modify that using the value. So one being fully deformed and zero being no deformed so zero being basis. And then what you're able to do is you're able to uh, keyframe that um, and get it so that it, when it hits the um, collision object, it seemingly deforms, even though there isn't any actual physics behind it anymore, that is. It still ha gives that appearance of it being physically deformed by the object. This is why I like this cloth based. Uh, approach because it gives a much more realistic look in my opinion. So what you need to do is you have to find the point where the object is just about to hit the the other object and that 
is when you want to set your value to zero and keyframe it there. And then keyframe it to one, so fully deformed, uh, when it's essentially stopped moving or where you stopped the um, simulation. Now, this isn't always going to be 100% accurate. So what you want to do is you want to go in with an another shape key and just clean things up initially. And the use of a cloth sim and proportional editing um, shape keys is, I feel, a really strong approach to this um, making crumple zone. So you can apply this effect to cars, machinery, and all, all sorts of metallic objects. So I hope this has been informative. Uh, this is by no means the only way you can do this. There are, there are thousands of other ways. I am sure of it. But ultimately, I feel that this way works. It's simple enough. And honestly, that's all that matters. At the end of the day, you get the results. Anyway, that concludes the tutorial on crumple zones. I hope that it's been informative and I hope that you've taken something away from it and you've been inspired to really develop upon this and go further with it. If you have any questions or feel that I could have done something better or clarified something a bit more, then please sit, leave a comment down below. I'll get back to it as soon as I can.